The first season of X-Men 97 has ended with the X-Men displaced in time. Rogue, Magneto, Xavier, Beast, and Nightcrawler, not pictured, are all trapped in Egypt in 3000 BC, with a young apocalypse. I would presume this is part of the Rise of Apocalypse saga, which saw Apocalypse grow up, meet Pharaoh Ramatut, who is really just King of a Conqueror in a different costume, and more importantly, gain advanced technology. Though, I do want to see him fight Thor, since they're both gods and they have canonically fought when they were younger. Jean and Cyclops end up in the future. They encounter Clan Ascani, and they meet Rachel Summers. I do wonder how they'll handle her. In the comics, Muffer Ascani is basically an aged-up version of Rachel Summers who played an important role in the Days of Future Past storyline. If I recall correctly, the Summers Rebellion storyline takes place in a Sentinel future. Okay, there's a lot of Sentinel futures in X-Men, so forgive me for forgetting, where these mutants overthrow the Sentinel overlords. And given the presence of Nathan Summers, I presume Strife will appear in some way, shape, or form. Who's Strife again? He's a headache. You see, Rachel thought cloning Nathan was a good idea, but then the clone got taken by Apocalypse to be raised as both a loyal soldier and a new host body. Strife was then declared to be a clone and thus unfit to be a host for Apocalypse's essence, so he sort of goes on the usual supervillain conquest and killing spree. You know, Rachel, with how bad that ended up, I'm not surprised that 100% of the kids you end up having in any universe end up turning evil and having the worst fashion choices ever, and not just because of the Sentinel-dominated futures. Anyways, in present-day Genosha, we see Apocalypse go through Gambit's ashes, saying, So much pain, so much death. Gambit is probably going to become the Horseman of Death. We also see that Forge, Roberto, and Jubilee made it off of Asteroid M before it got warped through time, meaning that they are effectively the last of the X-Men. Hmm, time to assemble some new mutants. And Forge has a few candidates on the board behind him, since, well, why wouldn't he? Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are apparently mutants in this universe, thank goodness, and they're off-world, presumably on Avengers stuff. Bishop is going to work with Forge to find the X-Men through time, presumably with Cable's help because he's not doing anything about it. I still believe that the mind-melding scene between Xavier and Magneto will eventually lead to Onslaught. Onslaught is a psychic entity born from Xavier and Magneto's psychic melodrama. He sees into the minds of Xavier and Magneto's and sees that humanity sucks. Then he sees into the mind of Nate Gray, who is from the Age of Apocalypse universe, and sees that mutants suck. He basically killed a bunch of heroes who were then saved by reality warper extraordinaire slash plot device Franklin Richards, who Onslaught also tried to use by pretending to be Franklin's imaginary friend named Charlie. Not sure how we're going to adapt this, maybe we're just going to cut it because let's be honest, using Franklin Richards as a plot device was cheap already by the time Onslaught rolled around. I still think Apocalypse will be the big bad of this season, because why wouldn't he? In the original's first season, we had the primary antagonist be the Sentinels in the season premiere and season finale, even doing Days of Future Past. Apocalypse did show up in that first season, but he wouldn't really be a major force until Beyond Good and Evil, which was like season 3 or 4, I believe. I think it was 4. So, him being the main antagonist, especially coming back from the whole defeat at the Axis of Time bit, I think that is probably what we're going to go with. Not to mention, he is the only character who could reasonably resurrect Gambit without cheapening the sacrifice. In fact, turning him into a supervillain will make the sacrifice even more tragic, especially if he doesn't come back, because that's always a risk. Those are just my thoughts on the matter. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.